All right, everyone. So I'm going to walk you through something that I was a little nervous to try the first time, but I think it's actually a really, really great program, especially for laser cutting and especially for the Glowforge. So I'm going to talk to you about how to use deepnest.io. So let's take a look at what that is. So DeepNest is a nesting software that will automatically nest all of your parts together. And if we scroll here, you'll see it into the most compact form that it can come up with. And it will also merge lines that overlap, turning them into single cut lines. So it won't double cut areas where they're touching. So it's basically a really simple nesting engine. It can read in DXF and SVG files, and then it can write DXF and SVG as well as CDR files from Corel, but I do not use Corel. So once you've kind of checked this out, it's at deepnest.io, simply download it. I've used it on both Windows, and today we're gonna to use it on Mac. It works essentially the same. So let's take, let's open that up and take a look at the interface. So it's very simple. All you're gonna to have to do is import your file and then you're gonna nest it. So it's really, really very easy. But we actually have to export a file. So I'm an illustrator and you can see I have hand nested these to the best of my ability and we're gonna see what deep nest does with them. So the first things that I gotta do is save it and I need this to be an SVG. So an SVG is a container file and that basically means it can contain a lot of different things including vectors and raster graphics. I don't always like to use SVGs because I find that they don't always keep their scale. At least when you import them in the Glowforge, sometimes they're like a different size than what you actually created. So I usually use PDFs. But in this case, it's just a container file. I'm gonna save it as an SVG onto my desktop. And then I'm just gonna leave the default settings. And I'm gonna come back over to Deep Nest. I'm gonna hit import and I'm gonna go find that SVG file and click open. And something to note is even if your objects are off the artboard, it's going to find them in there. The container file does not care about your artboards. So it's gonna grab everything. So now what I need to do, and this is where I was kind of confused the first time I used it, is you have to tell it what the actual board or what the item is that you're trying to nest them onto. So I didn't create like a box or anything. If you had a really unique piece of um, wood or something, let's say you had like a circle, you could draw that in here and let it import with your file and then tell it, I want you to nest all of this stuff as best you can into the circle. And it would try that. In this case, all I have to do is click this plus and it's gonna add a rectangle. And I am going to set this to the width of essentially a board that would go into the Glowforge. So that's gonna be 20 by 12. But if I had like a scrap of wood that was maybe like 10 by 15 or something like that, I could also put that in. I'm going to hit add. It's going to create a rectangle. And then I'm going to select that rectangle. So what I'm selecting is the area in which all of the other parts are going to nest. If there's one or two I do not need, so for example, maybe I don't need this, I can hit these and I can delete them and they will leave what I'm working with. So I'm going to have that selected. I'm going to hit start nest. And then the engine is going to start trying to nest them as best it can. And if you let it go, it will often try some different things. So you can see it may change and it will keep attempting different ways of nesting until you tell it to stop nesting. So if you go, well, uh, that works. It's very, very close, very, very tight, but maybe I want to nest it in a smaller area. You can instead go back delete this and I'm going to grab this here and hit delete and now let's go back and look at like what I actually had in Illustrator just really quickly not in inches. So let's try 11, oh, 11 inches. So I think maybe like 10 inches by, let's say seven inches. Just so I can get an idea of what I want to nest it into. Mm, 
Yeah, I think 7 by 10 because I'm looking at the height here and that was the width. So let's try 7 by 10 and see what deep mask can do with that instead. Kind of wanted to try and get a width that was actually going to be close to what would actually fit everything. And then I'm going to hit Add, select that item, and hit Start Nest. Now let's see what we get. Maybe it'll come out kind of similar to what I did. So it looks like... So you can see it works really hard to kind of get everything as close as humanly possible and then when you're finished you hit stop nest and then you can export and I export it as an SVG and then I will save this and I don't know if this problem is going to pop up here but we're going to test something. So I'm going to save this as earrings nested and I'm going to save it on the desktop. Let's minimize here. See if we can. Min looks like I can't even minimize it. So let's quit it real quick. And look, let's look at my earrings nested. So let's try and open this in Illustrator and see what happens. So it says, okay, text import options. Watch what's going to happen. When I try and open this, it's going to import like this. And you're going to go, well, what am I supposed to do with that? So instead, one thing that when you're exporting, you need to do is you need to add the .svg on the end of your file. And it's going to warn you like, hey, do you want to do this? I'm going to hit yes. And now when I open an Illustrator, it knows what to do and it's going to grab it correctly. Now everything is filled, so it looks like it's wrong. But if I switch these to outlines, you can see that I have my correctly nested file and I could then group this with other items. So here we have that. Here's my original version that took me a really, really long time to do. That took me, you know, 10, 15 minutes, where here I was able to do it pretty much instantly. So now let's try that technique I mentioned where you can actually have a unique board. So you could scan something. Let's say that you had something that looked a little bit like this. We'll keep our circle in here too, just so you can see. And we're gonna try that one more time. So let's say you had a scrap of board and you did your measurements or you took a picture and scanned it and just drew the shape of it. And this is what you have. And you want to try and nest as much of this as possible. I'm going to now save this SVG again. Open Deep Nest. Import. And I'm going to, ch I'm going to check this box again. So you can see it sees my, my new shape. But it will also grab the circle. So even though that wasn't on the artboard, it will pop up in Deep Nest. So now I am going to select this item here and I'm going to start nesting. So this one, I want to exclude it. I'm not 100% sure if I can exclude it. I think I kind of have to delete it. So let's try deleting it for now. And I'm going to select that as my basically my artboard and I'm going to start my nest. Let's see what happens here. And you can see it's going to map everything as best it can to that unique shape. So if you have strange scraps of board, you can use this in order to make the most use of them. Stop nest. And then if I wanted to export, I could. I can also go back. And there's some settings I can change here. So I can choose to adjust the space between parts if I need to. For example, if I'm working with a material where if the lines are too close together, it's going to scorch really badly or burn. I might want to change that. I can do, you know, ro uh, curve tolerance rotations, um, change your display unit. So I probably could have used the millimeters for my other one to figure it out. Uh, SVG scale, and that's just your screen scale. You, I'd probably leave that as it was. But there's some other things you can play with here. So you might want to look into this a little bit more. This merge common lines is really interesting. If you were to have a box, and you can see it's going to show you here, it will actually merge common lines and when you bring it back in the illustrator it will have broken apart these different pieces so that they're individual lines but it is really really helpful for saving space especially with rectangular pieces so now that we've done that let's minimize let's go back to deep nest let's go back to our nest this guy's probably started over here we're going to export it and then i'm going to pull up the glowforge and we're going to look so that looks good i'm going to stop the nest as it is Export SVG and here I'm going to head off that problem by just calling this earrings nest 2 and I'm actually going to type SVG. So that's a weird thing that I kind of had to figure out. I'm going to export that. We're going to bring this up 
Oh, wrong thing. App.glowforge. And now let's try uploading that artwork. And you'll see it's actually pretty easy. So let's take next two. And let's see if we have to make any adjustments in Illustrator or if it's going to upload just as we intended. So perfect. So if I change my settings now, I can say that I want these to cut. And let's say the three millimeter acrylic. And you can see even though it's a little bit off the artboard here, it didn't actually import that large rectangular container item. It must have sort of set that correctly so that it doesn't appear. And instead I just have everything really neatly nested. I would have to line it up with my board and I'd be ready to print. So that's a little introduction to how to use DeepNest. It's really, really helpful and I highly suggest that you give it a try.